Okay, the diamond back has had uh, quite a bit of a soak here, so he ought to be good and hydrated. And uh, it's time to uh, move him back over here to his uh, hibernation bin and uh, need to check out that wound on top of his head. Uh, obviously, as you can see, you want to uh, utilize your utensils where possible. To, uh, to give you some standoff and uh, undo the the uh, latches on your containers and uh, lift up your lids and things like that. And there he is, all coiled up. You ready to get out, buddy? He's giving us a little rattle, and uh, he's ready to strike. Need to get him repositioned so I can actually uh, tail him because he's facing me now and uh, he's in his uh, S-coil posture so he's, he's ready to strike and uh, I want him to uh, ease out of that posture a little bit before I uh, have to manipulate him a little bit to where how I want him for uh, bringing him out of that bin. See, so now he's uh, uncoiled and uh, he's looking for an escape Bring his head out and support the better part of his body with the uh, with the utensil. His body weight. Don't want to let him hang unsupported. And uh, keep his uh, upper body, the head low to the ground. And uh, they feel more comfortable that way. It's safer for the snake. It's also safer for the handler because uh, their weight shifts uh, to the forward part of their body. And uh, to to the tool, and being that these aren't uh, arboreal snakes, they're they're not constrictors, so they lack the uh, the muscular tone, uh, the bigger ones, to come back up the tool and strike you. And I've got a uh, tube here, a uh, clear vinyl tube, and uh, need to place this over his head so that uh, I can have a look at that uh, little wound he got on the top of his head uh, about a month or so ago and this is pretty much what I use the uh, the tongs for is uh, grasping you know like these tubes he's a little upset he's gonna bite the tube Such a big snake. He wants to bite you too. Come on, get in there, baby. Not the easiest thing to do. Probably be better if I just brought him back out. Get it out here on the ground. I'm gonna have to get him in a back in his uh, defensive posture so that he uh, doesn't want to go anywhere. Just let him crawl out. You always want to be mindful of how big your snake is and make sure you stay out of strike range, which uh, generally speaking is going to be about uh, half the length of their body. For a, a smaller snake that's not as uh, heavily bodied, they can uh, strike a little more than half their body length sometimes uh, because they're lighter. Anywhere from uh, a third to uh, one half their body length is uh, their effective strike range and it also depends on how far uh, elevated their uh, their upper body posture is too they can they can reach out and tag a little farther if they're 
a little bit more elevated off the ground. He's, he's a little low to the ground right now, so his strike wasn't that far. And a lot of it is for show. Anywhere from uh, a quarter to 50% of uh, snake bites are uh, dry, meaning they, they didn't inject any venom. But of course you should uh, probably still seek emergency services if that happens. But I'm sure you will. Oh, not wow! That's a uh, that's a new one. He not only is he rattling, but he just uh, gave me a big old hiss. I don't get that too often. But anyway, like I was saying, they don't like to waste their venom. So if uh, if you step on them, if they're in some kind of pain, then of course they're a lot more likely to envenomate you. Or if they're really really worked up, they they won't always envenomate. And he just decided to launch himself over there. And this is what we do. We get their head in the tube where he can't bite me. I have to use some care because uh, it can hurt him if he begins to thrash a bit too much. And I've got his head uh, far enough up in the tube. He can't uh, turn his head around and uh, back out of there. As well as holding the snake himself, I'm also holding the tube. Oh, don't break a fang, baby. He is pissed. He's opening up his mouth and showing them things. Yes, I know. You got fangs. Don't do that. You're going to break your fangs. Okay. Top of his head looks okay. Put him back in the box. Back in the box, baby. Like I was saying before, for a lot of the smaller snakes, I'll use uh, this little bait well net like this and uh, just kind of place it down on the ground in front of them, in front of the direction of travel, or even when they're coiled up like this, I'll get them in the, in the net. And snakes, uh, naturally, you know, they want to avoid a confrontation with, uh, with anybody that's bigger than them. And so if you offer them something like a little net here, like this, it's uh, kind of like a cave. And a lot of times they will just take to it. This little bag here is not something that I would typically uh, transport a, uh, a snake this large in. But for the smaller snakes, it works well. And the diamondbacks like to uh, usually inside the bag and kind of coil up and makes it nice and neat and I'll just carry them off like this. And they also do make purpose-built uh, snake bags on a, on a long handle like this. As far as I'm concerned they're uh, they're overpriced for what they are and uh, I'll make my own if I if I need them but for the most part I just use hooks and uh, seldom do I actually use the uh, the tongs for actually grabbing the, the snake. More often than not, I use, the, uh, I use the tongs to grab other things, utensils and things like that while I'm handling the snake. Because the, uh, the tongs got a lot more, uh, a lot more chance of actually hurting the snake with these things. I've got mine wrapped with, uh, with Coban wrap here to uh, make this a little gentler on him. But still, these jaws here, it's, it's a lot more likely that you're going to hurt the snake. Their ribs are easily broken. Their uh, cervical spine on these guys is, is not that strong. And uh, so uh, they run the risk of uh, being internally decapitated, uh, actually breaking their, uh, uh, severing their spine. So, and another thing with these tongs is, if, if you'll notice, I mean, these are jaws. So what happens if you, if you were to grab 
a snake or any other animal like this for that matter, this is this is how a predator would grab them, like like a hawk or something, you know, talons. So uh, in my mind, when you're using something like this and you, you grasp the snake, you're just adding to it its stress and um, you're uh, you're you're causing a situation where the snake is a lot more likely to uh, to resist you because you're grasping it and the same manner that a, that a predator would grasp it. And uh, so it's much more likely that that snake is going to resist you, uh, offer resistance, get out of control, and, uh, and then you sustain a bite. So it's, uh, it's not good for the snake, and uh, not good for you either if, uh, if uh, I mean, an injured, uh, a, an injured snake is a pissed off snake. So just avoid injury. Okay, time to get him back in his box. This is a, a nice specimen here, very heavy bodied, nice thick western diamondback rattler. And uh, he's, he's pretty heavy on the hook. Uh, a smaller hook probably would not work for this guy because he's, he's really heavy, really thick. And like I said, you want to uh, use your utensils where possible to, uh, you know, manipulate your things like uh, lids and everything. Just give you some standoff distance here so uh, you're not reaching down there with your hands. And that's for obvious reason. But then I'll, I'll hold the lid secure here and then latch it. And there we go. He's ready to go.